This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high growth companies meet. I'm joined now by Michael Kerluck, the VP of Investor Relations and Communications with Mag Silver. Michael, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Gail. We had a conversation with the president of Mag Silver back in January, or February, the start of uh, of the year. Yes. Uh, and now we're following up. So, of course, we address our investors here, potential investors. Mm -hmm. um, give us an update on where where Mag Silver stands right now. Well, Mag's a very interesting story. It's uh, the highest grade developing silver asset in the world today. And uh, we are partnered with the world's primary silver producer. So Mag is an exploration company. That's what we do. We're really good at finding stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you need someone who knows how to build it as well. So we're partnered with Fresno PLC, which is the world's primary, largest primary silver producer. So we find it and they build it. Mm. And right now we're heading into production and we'll be in production in H2 2020 or the second half of 2020. And the asset that we're speaking about, uh, you had mentioned it's 5% explored, but really it's a $1 billion asset. Yes. Let's put that into perspective and what that potentially means. Well, that's a, that's a big question and it's really interesting too because you know we're an exploration company and we trade on both exchanges, the uh, Toronto and the New York under MAG, MAG. And um, we've, uh, we've been around since 2000. And usually an exploration company is quite junior. Mm -hmm. But because we were very, very fortunate at the beginning of our exploration uh, timeline, we discovered the asset very, very early. In fact, we discovered it on hole 001. So our first hole we drilled, we hit mineralization. Oh, wow. yeah. Now, <coughs> we were because of that, the stock went up quite significantly and we were able to finance and therefore grow the company significantly. So that's where you find us now. We only have 86 million shares out and we're a 1.2 billion dollar company. Mm -hmm. And we're not in production yet. Right. And there's a lot of upside between now and getting into production. You could get technical or mathematical why that's going to happen, mm -hmm. but it's definitely going to happen. As well as the other value we add. Now what your first question was, or the first part of it is, well five percent. We've only f um, discovered or explored 5% of the property. Mm -hmm. And that's simply because we can't get away from ourselves. We sink another drill hole, we find more stuff. We sink more, we go, we'd like to go over to this part of the property, we'd like to go over to that part of the property. Right. Our property is 16 kilometers by seven kilometers, but we've only done 5% and we're a billion dollar company. Let's talk about location for a moment. And of course, in real estate, we say location is everything. And in this case, it absolutely is. You're located in Mexico, known for its silver deposits, of course. Uh, so let's talk about that. What does it mean to be in this location? And what does this mean for an investor? Sure. Well, if you're looking for silver in the world, you go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. There are 15 assets that are over, are over a billion ounces in the world, 15 of them. Eight of them are, are in Mexico and four of them are in the region that we're in. We're, it's called the Fresnel Silver Trend. And within the Fresnel Silver Trend, we are now the largest r district, I guess you could call, or region within that area. So if you're looking for silver, that's where you go. We actually happen to be uh, right in the bosom of the uh, concessions or the properties of, uh, of Fresnel PLC, which is the world's largest primary silver producer. So um, you said location is most important in real estate? Well, it is in, in mining too. Mm -hmm. you, you go where they found, someone else has found it. And you mine as close as you can to where you find it. Mm -hmm. So location, location, location is similar in, in mining too. I'm assuming that infrastructure then is probably to an extent there uh, in the surrounding uh, areas yeah. as well uh, because of the fact that this location is so rich. You're more than correct. Um, it's funny because uh, they've been mining here since 1552. So for 500 years, you know the Spanish conquistadors and all those guys? Well, they started and found it in the state of Zacatecas, uh, and, uh, and they found it in our region in 1552. The, the company that is operating building for us has been there for 130 years, and they're the largest silver company in the world. And uh, so what do you do? You go to the place <laughs> where you can find it, you find the best asset, you partner with the best guys, and ultimately you're creating value for your shareholders and we represent that value in a 1.2 billion dollar company. 
clearly some very smart decisions made uh, on, on Mag's part here. Um, let's now uh, shift to the investors. And of course, sure. the investors are who we speak to at the Richmond Report. Uh, tell us, uh, what are the three reasons that you would say this is the time to invest in our stock? Uh, that's a, a good question. Well, um, there's been many uh, times uh, that you can invest in, in MAG stock, and we are a stock that do go, does go up and down. Um, but one of the things about MAG is because the quality of the asset is so high, when I say the highest grade, what does that mean? That means we have 550 grams per ton silver, mm. and we have 145 million ounces of that silver. We have an additional 40 million ounces, that's 650 million. The average mining grade of a silver mining company out there is about 175. So we're very, very exceptional. So the, one of the main reasons or the, the most important things when you're looking for an asset in my, or, or a, a company in mining is to find the best asset. Mm -hmm. So now you've, you've identified as an investor an asset that's very good. So what do you do now? Well, you gotta make sure these guys can bring in production. Do they have enough money? Do they have the capacity of, of finding enough money? Mm -hmm and investors. Um, then do they have the engineering capacity or the execution capacity of doing that? Have they built a mine before? My CEO has built five mines before. Now we only have eight people in our company. It's billion dollars, eight people. But what we've done is we have a JV with this other company that has just built two mines in the last 10 years on time and on budget. So we eliminate all those issues or we minimize the risk for investors by partnering with someone who's done it before right. and done it twice. So all they're gonna do for building the mine is they're gonna scratch out the name uh, that they did before, Sacito, mm -hmm. and they're gonna put Juan Escipio, and they're gonna build the exact same structure. They don't do things fancy, they do things exactly before, so you minimize risk for the investor. Okay. So I would say those are the most important things. And then th things that carry on from that is if you have a really good asset, your costs are really, really low. Mm -hmm. So for what we have to produce one ounce of silver, it costs us $5.02 per ounce. The average in the industry is anywhere between 13, and we call that ASIC, which is all in sustaining cost. The average for the industry is between 13 and $16. Wow. So yeah. if silver ever goes down to $8, mm -hmm. which no one wants, we, and everyone is more than extremely challenged, if, if not around, we have an after-tax internal rate of return of 15% at that point. Mm -hmm. So if you're an investor, nobody wants to risk money. Well, mm -hmm. they want to risk money, but they actually want their cake and eat it too. Right. They, they <laughs> want to risk it, but they don't want to lose it. And then they want the upside. So what MAG uh, gives the investor the opportunity of is investing in something very significant, something that comes around every 30 or 40 years, mm -hmm. minimal downside, because we're going to be the last guy standing and all the upside of silver goes up and we get into production and we have cash flow and dividends and all those kinds mm -hmm. of wonderful things. Right, and it, you know what, it sounds like it's been a very exciting year uh, for Max Silver, but looking ahead to the rest of 2019 and 2020, what can we expect? Well, uh, MAG uh, continues to drill and we continue to drill on a number of fronts. Um, some of them are a little more boring than others because we just keep finding stuff. We're, we're, we're explorationists, so we want to find something significant or something that's going to blow your mind. Um, so we're going to continue to drill and we'll po possibly have drill results by the end of the year, if not the beginning of next year. We're working on some other projects that I can't really talk about at okay. this time yeah. that mm -hmm. I would say one of them might come to fruition by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Going on uh, over and above that, the, the biggest thing that we're concentrated now is our number one asset, which is the Juan Escipio asset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And really that's the development of it. So last year we bought the, the items which, which affect your timeline or execution delivery time of what we call the long lead items, which are the sag mill and all these things. You have to order them a year in advance because they're made in Turkey and China mm -hmm. and they come all over and are assembled there. Um, they're, they're in process, so uh, we'll, we'll, we will be delivering the project by the end of 2020. So we're very excited about that. And as I was saying mathematically or, or academically, is right now we trade at a, for the investors who are, are, are that inclined, we trade at a PNAV of 0.8 times, and junior producers uh, trade at about 1.2, 1.3. So we're just going to re-rate as we go forward 
once we get into production. And then after that, we're going to build the company because we're going to generate cash flows, after tax cash flows, of 80 to $100 million per year. Uh, looking forward to seeing how things unfold in the we're coming year. We're yeah. very, very excited very exciting. about it. Yeah. Very good. Michael, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Caleb. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know. You've been watching the Richmond Club Report. If you've just come across this channel, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and lucrative investment and trading ideas around here. We'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers, guys. Have an amazing and profitable day.